In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Superman vs Doomsday Deluxe set from McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line. Now, ever since this line started, I've longed for a 7-inch scale Doomsday. I'm sure I don't need to tell you how seminal the death of Superman was back in the 90s. This seemed like a really shocking big event, something that had never really been done before. And Whilst we've all become quite desensitised to superhero deaths in the following years, it's fair to say that at the time, this definitely rocked the comics world. And there's so many iconic images and panels and splash pages taken from this rather small event, actually, that have really firmly etched themselves into the minds of those who grew up reading these comics and even those who have come to them after the fact, because this is really big stuff and it's really beautifully told. And whilst the character of Doomsday, much like Bane, has slightly diminished with subsequent returns, you can never really forget that first impression uh, and what an impression this character made. And for me, as a fan, I've long wanted an original Doomsday, because we've had other Superman vs Doomsday sets, even from McFarlane Toys, but we've never had a classic Doomsday before, and this is the one I've held out for. So I'm really, really delighted that we finally got it, and I can't wait to share my thoughts with you. So, as ever, let's start off by taking a look at the packaging. Now, if you're a long-time viewer of my channel, you'll know I'm not the biggest fan of the DC Multiverse packaging, and uh, the same thing holds true here. We have this fantastic window display, which is really good, and I particularly like the inner uh, cardboard in-tray, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. But here we can see the two figures up front and center, posed in such a way to make it look like the battling, and this looks really good. It looks really presentable. Now, the black borders are the things I tend to complain about. There's a little uh, nice 85 years of Superman logo there which is pretty cool. Up front and center this actually looks like a really nice display piece. However if we look at the side panel again we have this rather chunky panel here that isn't really being used. This is a fantastic space that could have been really really well utilized if we'd had an image taken from the death of Superman with these two characters fighting each other would have been fantastic. I mean anything really would have been great. He could have even had an image of the figures themselves but sadly they've opted for this black border which is just it's just dull. Now, if we flip it and we look at the reverse, this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about that I think would look great on a side panel. We actually have two images here, one taken from one of the covers of The Death of Superman, and then we have uh, this more updated uh, modern interpretation of the event, which looks absolutely fantastic. And then if we look at the interior cardboard inlay, we can see there's this hand-drawn image of Metropolis, which looks pretty nice. I think maybe it should look a little bit more battle damage, though, to reflect the battle that's going on. That would be probably more appropriate and would make more of a display piece. But hey, I'm not going to complain. This is much better than the standard collage that we usually get. I really like this approach, and it does create a mini diorama to stand your figures in, which is fantastic. So let's start off by taking a look at the Superman figure. Now we've had quite a few Supermen from the DC Multiverse line in recent years, but overall I quite like the appearance of this battle damage Superman. I think the colors are nice and bright and colorful as they should be, and I think the sculpting works really quite well. Now I may be mistaken on this, but I feel as if we've had the Superman before, but this is essentially just a repaint to make him appear closer to the death of Superman, which is absolutely fine. I think the little additions that we see here work really Really well. Uh, I really like the, the blood effects on the face in particular, particularly around the mouth. I think that works really, really well. I like the expression on his face. Obviously, he's going into battle, so it's good that he's grimacing there. He looks more mean and uh, aggressive, which is great. And I think overall, they've done a really nice job with this. And it's really nice to see some paint apps on these figures, because this is something I tend to criticize McFarlane for. Now, if we look at the body, we can see here that the actual S, the shield there, is actually sculpted in, which is a great touch, gives it a little bit of depth and texture, which I always uh, am very fond of and very keen for. And I think they've done a nice job with the overall body sizing and sculpting. Likewise, the colors they've used uh, look really bright and colorful as they should be reflecting the comic book page, which I really like. It also makes for a great display. <laughs> of course, we also have some additional paint apps. Now, you might notice there is some brown uh, markings on the top of his torso there. This is supposed to be skin tone I think this is meant to be his skin being pierced uh, coming through under the costume after being damaged um, I think the coloring is slightly wrong it's a little bit too dark so it could be muck or dirt instead I don't know but if it is meant to be skin uh, they've dropped the ball on this one I'm afraid now we do have some other scratches you can see some darker blue scratches on his legs on his shoulders and his arms uh, again this is meant to simulate uh, damage that he's had and I think it's fine it feels a little bit cheap it feels a little bit lazy I would much have preferred actually that they just 
sculpted the chest and actually had him bare chested and bare armed as he appears in the comic book as he gets progressively more damage throughout the battle. Uh, that would have been my personal preference but this is still good and it's nice to see some apps being added here to create the illusion of battle damage. Likewise, if we look at the cape, there has been an attempt here to actually cut some holes in it and make it more tatty around the edges, which I think looks really good. I really like this frayed effect. I, th I think this works really well. Now, there's no shading on it, which is a real shame because uh, I think that would have enhanced this. And the cape itself is, is fairly flexible, uh, but it's still fixed in place. I also thought I'd briefly mention the hands that he comes with. He actually does come with an alternate pair of hands as well, but sadly, no closed fists, which I think is a misstep here. You definitely want uh, this version of Superman to have a fist because he is in a proper fight here. So it's strange that he's got a lot of different gripping hands and open palmed hands, as we'll see a little bit later. So moving on to articulation, he does have a ball joint in the top of the neck there, so he can spin his head all the way around and he can lean it left and right. Of course, he can also nod it up and down. Although it's not a huge range of motion, there's still plenty of room here. Now he does have this fantastic butterfly wing joint at the top of the shoulder there allowing the arms to really come forwards and backwards which is brilliant. There is a ball joint in, in that socket there as well allowing the arms to really lift up. There is of course a complementary bicep swivel as well which is absolutely fantastic and we even have a double joint in the elbow. There's that ball joint that McFarlane Toys loves so much and I'm not a fan of <laughs> that allows the, the wrist to rotate all the way around and hinge up and down. And then in the torso we have two points of articulation and I do think this is wonderful because we're it really really able to move this figure from side to side and lean him left and right in extremes, which is absolutely fantastic. Likewise, we can get a really great range of motion when we're bending him forwards and backwards, which is absolutely fantastic for display. He's got ball joints in the hips, of course the legs will kick out to the side, they will kick forwards and they will even kick backwards. There's a double joint at the knee allowing that lower leg to kick all the way back which is great and then we have another ball joint at the ankle allowing that foot to uh, rotate all the way around and of course hinge forwards and backwards. And you'll also notice we have some toe articulation as well. Accessories wise, well, he's pretty light. He does come with an alternate pair of hands, but they are sort of open palmed hands. These are flying hands. And it's a real shame that we didn't get an additional pair of fist hands. All in all though, I have to give this figure four stars. I'm really, really happy with it. I think they've done a pretty fantastic job. The articulation is top notch. I couldn't think of anything else I'd want them to include. So I think they've covered every base there. The overall presentation of this figure is actually really good. I really like the sculpting. I really like the paint apps for the most part. I think they've done a good job. My only real criticism of this figure is that it doesn't really come with enough accessories, especially in a deluxe set like this with a high price point. It would have been nice to have at least an additional pair of closed fists, but maybe some special effects as well, uh, some eye beams or something like that that could have really enhanced this set. Okay, so moving on to Doomsday then. Now, of course, Doomsday is an oversized figure. It absolutely towers above Superman, as we'll see a little bit later, and that's exactly as it should be. Now, I think the sculpting for this figure is top-notch. I think they've done an absolutely tremendous job with him. I really like that a lot of the rock effects are actually stuck on, so they're separate pieces, really giving that uh, sense of depth and texture that I really like in my figures, and this works particularly well here. Plus, also, they've capitalized on this great sculpt with some really nice paint apps as well. There's actually a number of different white washes running through uh, the grey plastic which is really good and really brings out some of this detail so yeah top marks here I think this is off to a really good start. He does only come with the one pair of hands there are no swappable pieces for Doomsday but he does have a gripping hand and he has this closed fist hand and I think that works perfectly well for this character. The only minor criticism I would have of Doomsday is that where we see the green on the boots and on the trousers or the shorts, uh, we don't get any paint washes here at all, which would really help. I think just a, a wash going over these, a black wash would just create a little bit more of a sense of texture, which would be really great, especially as this is supposed to be in battle mode. They're supposed to be getting really scuffed up and fighting here. So it would be nice to have a bit of a wash running through that just to reflect uh, all the dirt and grime that they are embroiled in. The articulation scheme is pretty much identical to Superman, but he does have one extra point of articulation in the jaw here, which opens and closes. I love this. I think this works tremendously well. We can even see the paint apps inside the mouth, which is brilliant. And I think this just works really nicely. Now, of course, he does have the ball joint in the neck, so he can spin his head all the way around and he can nod it up and down and he can lean it left and right. So I think they've covered all bases here. Uh, this is tremendously, uh, surprisingly well done. So uh, top marks to McFarlane for this. Now, he does have the same shoulder joints as well so we have that butterfly wing joint which is brilliant so we have the ball joint in the shoulder allowing it to lift up and out 
But perhaps unsurprisingly, he doesn't have the bicep swivel and nor does he have the double jointed elbow. He's just got the single joint there, but he is a larger character, a larger figure, and I think that works absolutely fine. Instead, he has this pin swivel, so the lower forearm will rotate all the way around and it will still hinge to about, mm, well, just less than 90 degrees. He does have a ball joint in the wrist, so of course, the hand will still rotate all the way around and it will hinge up and down, although the range of motion here is much more limited than we see with the Superman. Now he still has two points of articulation in the chest which, and the torso, which is absolutely fantastic. So he can still move all the way around, lean left and right, and you can get a pretty healthy range of motion when it comes to bending forwards and backwards as well. He's got the ball joints in the hips, the legs will kick out to the side, they'll kick forwards, they'll kick backwards, and then we have another pin swivel at the knee. So once again, that lower leg will spin all the way around and it will hinge to about 90 degrees. Then finally, we have an ankle pivot at the ankle there, allowing the foot to hinge forwards and backwards, but also rock from side to side. Sadly, this time, there is no toe articulation. And as a quick scale comparison, here he is standing next to the Superman. As you can see, he absolutely towers above him. He must be coming in about nine inches tall uh, to Superman 7, which is absolutely fantastic. This is exactly as it should be. Uh, Doomsday should absolutely be a monstrous in size, uh, a real threat to Superman. And I think they've, they've caught that essence here really, really nicely in this scaling. Now, sadly, Doomsday doesn't come with any accessories, but that's not going to stop me from going ahead and giving this figure five stars. This is quite rare. <laughs> this is quite a coveted rating from me. I don't usually give out five stars, but this figure's really impressed me. I think he's absolutely fantastic. I love pretty much everything about him. I think the sculpting's really good. The paint apps are wonderful. The articulation's great. And I just think he's just an impressive figure all around. And that's what you want. You want to have that feeling when you open him up. And he, he definitely surpassed my expectations, which is a beautiful thing because I had high hopes anyway. Uh, so definitely five stars for me. I think this is a really great effort on McFarlane's part. Okay, so there you have it. All in all, this is a delightful set. I think if you are a fan of the death of Superman, if you grew up reading those comics or you've come to love it uh, after the fact uh, and you have any love for this pairing or this particular battle, then I'm going to encourage you to track this down and pick it up because I think it's well worth it. Now, we have had other Superman vs. Doomsday sets in the past based on more uh, modern or more recent appearances of the characters. Um, but for me, this holds a special place in my heart. And if you're like me, you're probably going to want to pick this up even if you've got that previous set because this is the definitive version in my personal opinion. Uh, I'm really delighted to have this. I think this is a really great set. I really love everything about it. I even think the packaging is, is a, a several notches above what we normally get from uh, the DC Multiverse line. So I think it's a real crowd pleaser and I think they've done a pretty fantastic job all round. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.